Hello everybody, it's Ranger Mark Mello with the Blackstone River Valley National Historical Park welcoming you to our 11th Ranger Chat. This week is an important week in our nation's history. Not only do we celebrate the 4th of July this coming Saturday, but it's also the anniversary of the Battle of Gettysburg, which happened on July 1st through 3rd of 1863 during the American Civil War. And what better way to commemorate that event than to discuss the effect that the American Civil War had on the home front back here in the valley. And so we're going to take a closer look at specifically how uh, the village of Hopedale was affected as a result of the Civil War and the moral dilemma that those who lived in Hopedale had to confront as a result. Hopedale was founded in 1842 as a practical Christian commune. Aidan Ballou, the community's founder, believed that his community, the first of what he hoped to be many, could bring to a reality what he believed was a true Christian lifestyle in a communal system. Ballou and 44 followers hoped that their example would create a new utopian society in the United States. But by 1856, the days of the commune ended. Although Ballou remained the community's preacher, and his influence was still very much felt to his death in 1890, the Draper brothers bought out the commune and transitioned it to a company town. Two of Ballou's most passionate beliefs were his rejection of slavery and non-resistant ideology. Hopedale became a major stop on the Underground Railroad, aiding numerous fugitive slaves in their quest for freedom. Ballou was also an adherent to the ideals of non-resistance. Non-resistors disavowed the current state of government as being contrary to the higher duty to God and humanity. They pledged to refrain from violence in any form against any human being. They believed it was their duty to act politically to promote what was best in civil affairs but they strongly believed that violence was never justified. These two tenets of Ballou's Hopedale came to a head in April of 1861, when hostilities broke out between the northern and southern portions of the United States. Would the young men of Hopedale go off to fight for the Union and ultimately to end the institution of slavery? Or would they remain bystanders, believing that violence could never be justified? even in a cause to preserve a nation and abolish the institution many of them despised. Some, like George Draper and his son William, removed themselves from the community of non-resistors and openly supported the war. William went on to serve in the Union Army, eventually rising to the rank of general. Ballou believed that the tenets of non-resistance trumped the fight to end slavery. Ballou wrote this, quote, True and good doctrine must be true and good in extreme cases, for these would be where the principles would be most needed. That extreme cases are the tests of principles, virtues, doctrines, and professions. It is easy to love the lovely, to be friendly to the friendly, to be peaceable toward the peaceable, but to love the hateful for the sake of their inmost soul, as God does, to be a friend to the wicked and the outrageous offenders, so as to die rather than to harm them, to be peaceable toward the violent and the destructive. This is being human, godlike. It is just the thing this evil world needs to see in extreme cases to elevate it, to make it a better world." End quote. Although many of Ballou's abolitionist colleagues felt as though he had abandoned the slaves in their hour of most need, Ballou believed that pacifism was a principle that should never be forgotten. Gilbert Thompson was torn. An apprentice in Hopedale's print shop, Thompson was a strong believer in both abolition and non-resistance. He decided to split the difference. He would go off and enlist in the U.S. regular army, but he would sign on as a topographical engineer. He would become a map maker for the army. This way, he could help the Union Army preserve the Union and free the slaves, but would not have to kill any man himself. And then there is the example of John Lowell Haywood. Haywood was drafted into Army service in the summer of 1863. Haywood felt that his sense of duty to his nation did not jive with his moral convictions. This conscientious objector paid a bounty to have another person serve in his place. Although Haywood's father wrote a lengthy letter to the government authorities stating his opposition to the war, Haywood would pay the bounty so he would not have to go and fight in the war himself. 
These few examples of how individuals who lived in Hopedale confronted the moral dilemma of the American Civil War is an important and powerful reminder that most issues are not as simple as they seem. Although we like to relegate people to one side or another in an argument, the reality is, is that most people fall somewhere on a spectrum in between the two polar opposite opinions. In this story, we saw how individuals who lived in Hopedale confronted the moral dilemma posed to them and made decisions that they believed were correct and were the right thing to do given their circumstances. Perhaps it provides us with something to think about in our own politically divisive world that we all live in today. Thank you everybody for joining us for this 11th Ranger chat. As always, if you have any ideas, uh, for topics you'd like to see us cover in the weeks upcoming, please leave those down in the comments below. We would love to hear from you. With that being said, stay safe, stay healthy, and we'll see you out there along the Blackstone really soon.